and welcome to another fine episode of Death Piles and Taxes. Fine episode. That's uh, that's a big promise now. Well, it better be. This is episode number five. Five. That's like over a month worth. We are staying alive. Um, hopefully, and we'll stay alive for this. There's going to be some repercussions coming down. The best part is, is we are coming to you on our new fancy dangled equipment. We're live and loud. That's right. This is fancy. This is a microphone stand. Yeah. We got headphones on. We we got our own engineer here too. We have an engineer for the day. A little heavy special here. guest. And uh, we're rocking and rolling, man. So you'll have to tell us if our uh, sound quality, if our podcast becomes a hundred times better. Hopefully, we can, uh, yeah, piece her together. Maybe get us a little, a little tunage, a little. The, the more, the better, right? That's right. Well, let's get into some death pile and taxes, my friend. Well, what do we got this week? I, uh, I prepared, I prepared a little off, off kilter from what we've been doing. I'm gonna go on the. Uh, I think we talked tickets last week. Okay. Oh, so, yeah, we did. That's so right. I've prepared a lot of my ticket information. Okay. Um, just kind of mix it up because it seems like I was going eBay heavy and I like to diversify eggs in many baskets. You're going to tell us about your Taylor Swift tickets? There's there's ways to make money out there and uh, online and it doesn't all have to be, well, you can sell tickets on eBay too, I guess, but Taylor Swift, oh Katie, man. Katie Perry? That is on the docket. I, you know, I can read you like a book. Well, because you were trying to buy them tickets, and I wouldn't take your prices. <laughs> uh, I was not. Uh, I was not that willing to pay that. Would you pay seven hundred, eight hundred dollars a ticket? Well, that's coming up. Let's not spoil. Spoiler alert. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't know if you noticed. Did you check out my other desk over there? Well, yeah. You see what, my, what do we got? What do we got over there? My fine pile of merchandise. Looks like somebody's been in the tie closet. That's right. I got the tie closet. And uh, in the Seinfeld game. Yeah, you you see that other thing? Well, I see lots of things. I mean, specifically what? Well, check it out. Let me let me make a jaunt over there to grab it. Okay, here he's he's moving. Oh, oh, what's that? that's a vest? That's a good looking vest. Excellent looking vest. Do Is that know? MacGyver MacGyver vest? What do we have? Do a camel? Know? The decal. Well, I don't know what that is. That would be Camel Joe, my friend. Oh, is that a, how many packs of cigarettes did he have to smoke to get that thing? <laughs> my, my right lung. <laughs> when you grow up in Prump, Nevada, you can pick up some habits. Hey, that was a good find at a thrift store in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hell yeah, you get, you get a flipper? I'm going to sure find out. I like to find out what that sucker's worth. It might be surprising. You know was what? that Camel Bucks, or how did those work? Yeah, they do was Camel Bucks. Yeah, and to smoke like... Five hundred dollars worth of cigarettes, and they'd send you a jacket to keep warm while you're outside smoking. Or you go to the thrift shop and you pick it up for two bucks. Well, there you go. That's my. That's the way I like to do it. So I, I kind of figured, just like you said, right? We really want to do uh, the proof is in the pudding. Uh huh. And I'm going to actually start selling stuff on eBay. That's what I've been calling out to. Oh, hold up, hold up. You know what time it is? Do time. Oh, that sounded nice. <laughs> it's due thirty, my friend. And if they don't sponsor us, it'll soon be uh, Mellow Yellow or Mountain <laughs> Lightning time. I love that. That's, a, that's what we had growing up. We had Shasta or Sam's Choice, and then once all the kids moved out, they started buying the name brands again. The best part is, is that's the whole idea of this podcast, is to put a little fire on you and make you do something. So I haven't sold anything on eBay since probably, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. Like I said, I sold some college books. And what I'm hoping... Is that stack of stuff over there might be able to net me a little cash? A little, a little uh, Red Lobster money? Ooh, give me some cheddar biscuits. You think the wife out? You tell the kids, hey, anything off the right side of the menu is yours. <laughs> anything off the right side. Hey, kids, we're at uh, Taco Bell today. You don't have to order after the dollar <laughs> menu. You can pick a number, a number mill. <laughs> you even get a soda, not a water today. Well, I have to say something first off. Okay, well, you we, tell well, me We've been getting a little feedback. Ooh. We haven't been on, uh, what, we're, we're bad, we're nationwide, a little, we, a little ZZ Top action. We are. We've uh, launched this week. My buddy Pelican. Oh, Pelican. He's a, he's a fond listener now. Yeah, he should be. We called him lazy. Well, you called him lazy. It's true. Now, well, here's the thing. I can't sit here and have you disparage the good name of Pelican in front of me and our guest here. Okay. You don't get to be the number five officiating ump in the country by being lazy. So, like, like you're talking about like Major League Baseball, right? Well, as far as the women's softball uh, collegiate goes, yes. 
Okay, so can I collegiately bet on this? I'm not going to get my buddy in trouble. All I'm going to say is you don't get ranked and travel the nation, call them like you see them, down the mills of strike. There's some there's some controversial calls that he's putting his life on the line every night out there, traveling the highways and the byways. <laughs> Look, you can't even hold a straight face and be lazy. That's all I'm saying. That's it. Well, if he was really doing it, as he's traveling the highways and byways, he'd be hitting the old thrift stores trying to find Camel Joe jackets. You know, he's got a good opportunity, actually, to do that kind of thing. Send it home to the missus and say, put her up. I'm going to Nebraska. Or uh, I think he last, last we heard, I think he was claiming he was in San Diego on a rain hour. It doesn't rain in San Diego, does it? I heard that San Diego thing. And here's another thing I was thinking. What's his day profession? Uh, he's, a, he's an educator. So if we got any other educators listening, right? Yeah. I say you give those kids extra credit for listening to pop Death Piles and... Uh, taxes. Taxes. I can't I, remember the name of our own show. I'm working on a guy right now in Orem to see if we can get an engineer to help us out. Well, I'm just saying these kids, get them doing this. I, I love it. That's Pay for great. that college, right? It's not getting any cheaper. I tried getting them to do that at uh, UVU, and you were the fine guest speaker, but... Kids I say we go younger. Kids, kids are lazy. If you're in uh, Mr. Wallace's class and you're hearing this, tell them extra credit. Yeah, you tell them that uh, Mr. Wallace, quote unquote, Pelican. Yeah, that's a code word. You got to use the code word. Mr. Pelican is going to give you an extra ten percent credit on your next test. Something. Yeah. I say straight A. And straight. I love. I it, mean, straight a. Get the kids out there selling. They don't need whatever you're pushing them. No. We don't need no more education, right? I mean, we, we went back to, was it was her name Mrs. Bishop? Is that the feedback I heard today? I can't confirm or deny. You're, you're a math teacher? I'm not, I'm not naming names. Okay, well, you know what? You're not the only guy that got some feedback. Oh, what, well, what, 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 uh, what do you hear? You know, I got a buddy named old Mr. Church. Mr. Church. Yeah. Sounds okay. He, he's important. Okay. Runs a large facility in uh, central Nevada. Is it a church? No, it's not. His name is Church. He runs a, a, a nuclear test site, pretty much. Okay. Actually, dump sites. Wait a minute. There's nuclear dump sites in Nevada? <laughs> you know where aliens come from? That's what you're seeing is the green glow. That's right. Anyways, uh, sent over the old pod beam, or pod cart, whatever you want to call it. And you want to hear his feedback? Let's hear it. Oh, this is good stuff. LOL, good listening on the drive home, LOL. Love MacGyver, by the way. Well, you know what LOL stands for since you've never chatted online with a with a lady friend uh, no, in your younger years, not, or now. Not sure what that means. That's lots of love. Oh! That's what I heard. I thought it was laugh out loud. See, that's what you thought. He sent you lots of love. Hey, you Okay. Well, let's cut down to the nitty gritty. Let's get some business going here. Well, you didn't tell everybody we got seventy five downloads in the past day. Twenty four hours up and seventy five down. I don't know if that's something to be proud of or not. That's a lot, man. That's a lot for not advertising and yeah. putting it on the the pod bean. Your mom's been busy this week. Well, I yeah, that's a lot of listening. Um so tickets, man. Tickets. Tickets. Speeding tickets? All sorts of tickets. I'm a guy that likes to go to live events, right? All right, live events. And live events uh, have supply and demand. They certainly do. Now, the problem that you'll run into is these things come and go. So if you're holding a ticket to something, it's tomorrow, and uh, it's still got value, but the day after tomorrow? Nothing. That goes to zero. Okay. So cautionary tale, you can you can lose big, you can you can win big. Or you can just break even. All right. So tell me what you got. Give me some examples, my friend. We'll get to that. Oh. We'll get to that. You just hold on to those horses. All right. Um. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you what I got. Right. Tell me what you got. We got uh, tickets, right? So there's all sorts of different sites to, to buy and sell your tickets on. I'm sure you've heard of StubHub. There's a few others. He's donning the, the vest as we speak. Have you ever bought tickets online from uh, not the original seller? You ever done oh, that? Oh, yeah, StubHub. It was weird. I bought my tickets to the 07 uh, Red Sox playoff game mm -hmm. against the Cleveland Indians, and I had to meet a guy in a 
hotel in Boston. That was a little weird for me. I didn't ask how you paid for them. I said, oh. have, you ever buy, have you ever bought them before? Hey now, hey now. I'm just, that was strictly through StubHub. Strictly. No no funny business there. I mean, you got your uh, Facebook marketplaces now. You got about a million different places. Uh, you want to make sure they're legit. I just heard of a, a story. Dave Chappelle was doing a, a comedy show the other day, right? Okay. And apparently some people for their anniversary, I think it was Valentine's, were uh, going to go see the show, and they bought some tickets off the internet, went to uh, went to go inside the building, and it turns out they were fake tickets. Ouch. So out of the goodness of his heart, I don't know how he found out about it, uh, he just let the people in and met them and said sorry about that. But you got to be careful, because uh, anyone with, uh, I mean, these kids nowadays, they can reproduce anything, and if you're meeting some guy in the back alley and buying tickets for, you know, next to nothing... You might be getting scammed, so you want you want to be watching that. So I'd say stick with legitimate places or you know trusted sources. Um, also, what you want to be careful of is all states are different. So some states you can get in some big trouble for uh, trying to sell some tickets and making a little extra money, more than face value, so on and so forth. So do your dil- due diligence, and make sure that uh, you're you're abiding by the laws of wherever you're at. Okay. Um, that all that all being said and done, I've had a lot of success with uh, not necessarily your bigger names. Um, also, I guess I should throw out there: people are going to hate you. So if you don't want people to hate you or think like you're a rotten, dirty person that's ruining it for everyone, probably stay away from that too. If you're if that kind of thing bothers you, you might uh, not have thick enough skin to be to be. Uh, Selling tickets. Uh, I think we refer to you as uh, Mr. Scumbag. Is that right? Uh, I've been called. I've been called that before. I don't know what you necessarily refer to me as, but yeah, that's what it says on my phone when I call you. Well, there you go, Mr. Scumbag. Keep your uh, friends close and your enemies closer. Huh? You know, that's the funny part. Is somebody really wrote this in one of the uh, Facebook feeds that you were selling uh, Christmas items in, <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Scrooge? I can't believe your, uh, you know, demand for items. It's okay to buy your house at a low price and sell for high, but heaven forbid you do that with a Furby doll. Well, yeah, that Furby costs fifteen dollars in the store. You're gonna ask seventy five dollars. That's called, that's fifty more dollars. It's called supply and demand. Sixty, right? I don't know. Quick math there probably wasn't don't, right. Don't do math on the air, bro. Anyways, you ever heard of a man called Gary Allen? Ooh, isn't he uh, like uh, a singer or something? He's a singer. And about probably five to seven years ago, he was really, really popular, but he wasn't getting, um, I don't know how it all works, right? There's different venues, different sizes. He was in some of the smaller uh, venues. So you're saying that the uh, supply was low? I'm saying that uh, I joined the Gary Allen Fan Club so that I could buy pre-sale tickets so that I could go and sell them at a higher price. Genius. And, And it worked quite well. The reason that I was in the fan club, and you might want to do this, I, I like to find um, popular artists, maybe different places, like different people are more popular in some states than others, right? You like get different regional. followings, regional. Yeah, yeah. Gary Allen must be a good looking guy, the women seem to like him, and uh, at least here, and so my wife wanted to go see a Gary Allen concert. Isn't that the guy that looks a lot like me? No. No, it looks nothing like he's good looking. <laughs> The women like him. Like, are you listening to my story at all? <laughs> kind of. So, so he was a good-looking man, unlike yourself. And he was playing uh, these smaller, like, almost clubs, thousand seats, give or take, right? What was that one we used to go to up in Salt Lake? They closed it down. The Porty Call. Porty Call, yeah. This was... Uh, and they had the Madison, too, in Provo. Yeah, is that still going? Remember we went there, and my wife was, like, 19 months pregnant, and it was just awful. New Year's Eve, I think. Probably not not your smartest move. No, that was not good. She was a trooper, though. Yeah. Didn't get over until like 2 in the morning. Well, that's when all the good times happen. That's true. So, you get into these fan clubs. Most of them are free to join. They'll give you a pre-sale ticket. Okay. You get that pre-sale ticket, and you have to make sure that you can transfer it either digitally or you get a hard copy, or else, once again, you're going to the concert. Also, I'd say it's probably something that you should be uh, willing to if, if things go bad. And no one buys it, you're going to it, so you might want to find something you enjoy. So we're kind of taking a gamble. It's a gamble, 
but there's a, there's a lot of upside. So with Mr. Allen over the last few years, he's got to bigger places now, or the ladies have grown, or I don't know what's happened, but he's not quite packing in the dollars like he used to. But I made several several hundred dollars off of him anytime he'd come in the tri-state area because you get the pre-sale code. Well, you can get it for Vegas, you can get it for Idaho, you can get it for Utah, Arizona, Colorado, where we're at, right? Where did you go, man? And so uh, I'd, I'd go on there and, and get get a handful of tickets and just just piece them out. So what you're saying is, if if I did a little due diligence and I like music mm-hmm. and I got on some of these these fan page things. I get pre-sale concert tickets, yeah, and then I can turn around and sell them. Maybe buy four, and and you know, hopefully use the earnings from two of them. And now I've essentially paid for my concert for free. Maybe. For free. Well, funny you should say that. You brought up Katy Perry a little earlier, and my wife wanted to go see Katy Perry last year. So me being the guy I am, thought, well, I can just buy tickets, or if my wife wants to go and is telling me this, somebody else's wife. Once ago, I was telling them that. Exactly. So I went all out and bought VIP floor tickets. Ooh. I think they were like fourth, fifth row. Okay. I didn't do the VIP, but I did find uh, sometimes with your credit card, you'll have like uh, certain offers that you get pre-sale access to. So I had some sort of pre-sale through a credit card. Okay. And then I bought the cheaper tickets for us. So I was going to sell the VIP, have the cheaper tickets, have those paid for it and make a little extra. Sounds like a great idea. Throw them up on the stub hub, VIP, floor, so on and so forth. Okay. Well, it turns out the uh, the arena we were in was a big arena. All right. Maybe Katie wasn't as popular as she used to be. Okay. I'm starting to sweat it. <laughs> this is uh, Thanksgiving weekend, I think, of last See, last year, 2017. Two years ago. Year two ago, years, somewhere there. you got to help me know why you're sweating it. What do you throw down for these tickets? Um... You know, I don't know, to be honest, but it was a lot. That's a lie. It was a lot. That's a lie. Everyone knows what they paid for items. When you buy as much as I do, you kind of lose track. I'm not buying it. And so are we talking like $200? No, I'm going to say they were at least four or $500 a ticket, if not more. And we've got four of them, so we're talking... Well, no, no, no. I got two on the floor. Okay. And then I got the cheap seats that were probably like 40 bucks or something. So we're talking this is like a four-digit investment. We're talking... Yeah, this was enough where I was going to... I was going to make some money. Okay. So I throw them on the step hub for like a 1000 bucks probably each. Okay. And floor seats... Good concert, you enjoy yourself, VIP, whatever that means, right? She gonna make you roar? You're gonna have the Eye of the Tiger. You're gonna see fireworks. Wrong song. Eye of the Tiger is not Katy Perry. Well, I beg to differ. You just, like, insulted every Rocky fan there ever was. That's Eye of the Tiger. Beg to differ. So, we'll put them on the stub hub. <laughs> Rocky. Are you 1979 here? We're in 20, 2019. Apparently you haven't watched Creed 2 lately. No. I went to three movies this whole last year, and then I went to two this last month. Well, none of them were good. I'm mean, guessing. Hey, don't let me don't let me sign I've me. seen Academy Award nominations. Okay, what are you watching, Rosebud? I don't know what Rosebud is, but I'm sure it's beautiful. Citizen Kane? Oh, that's a great film. That's what Rosebud came from. Well, then I we're getting that. so far diverted here, buddy. Katy Perry tickets were roaring. We got the Eye of the Tiger. That's where we went from. Oh, yeah. You know your wife loves it. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Your little girl's dancing around to it. I don't think we listen to that. Well, you should start. You could have bought these tickets and made her a year. Or made you thousands. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's Thanksgiving weekend, and it's probably four or five days before. I'm thinking, well, we're going to be sitting VIP, and I'm going to be giving away some tickets, and I just lost... A whole lot of money and learn my lesson. I don't do this. This is why I don't buy tickets because it's got that hard expiration date. Okay. All of a sudden, a Christmas miracle occurred. Okay. I'm sitting in a family dinner and I hear some sound from my phone that wasn't the eBay ka-ching. And I said, I wonder what that is. And I looked and sure enough, those tickets had sold. I had to overnight ship them to up northern state somewhere. And I just said... Thank you. Lesson learned. What did you sell them for? I think they were a thousand a piece, nine hundred or a thousand a piece. So you doubled your money. Yes, sir. And you paid for your own seats. Yeah, and for every Katy Perry ticket I bought, I received her free CD. <laughs> so I got like four Katy Perry CDs, 
And with the VIP, they sent me this special box that had like a fanny pack and like a backstage laminate looking thing and a t-shirt and a hat. Guess what I did with those? You sold them online. I sold them on eBay for like 50 bucks a piece. And they went over this holiday season. So... You are rolling the dice, man, and just roll the dice. Sevens on a roll, on a roll, on a roll. Well, seven is what good come out roll, but after that, you don't want the seven. You're getting craps I, out. You know, I'm, I like math and stuff, but I never gotten into that whole craps things at the table, man. Just couldn't do it. Good time. That's a whole other podcast. Did, you mean YouTube channel? <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying that may or may not be shut down. Oh, it's that one's up and rolling. This one might be shut down before long, but that one's up and rolling. All right. So what I'm saying is that was a bigger venue, right? Good idea. That's where the Utah Jazz play basketball, 19, 9, 11 seats in there. I don't know what the concert, how it cuts it off at the end of the floor. So so your supply and demand is a little different than when you have a Gary Allen play in the local bar. Um, Another one is these mega tickets. Have you ever heard of a mega ticket? I don't know what a mega ticket is. So you have your uh, local amphitheaters, and you have, it's usually country mega tickets or something like that. You're talking like country jam? It's kind of like a country jam, except for, it's almost like a season pass to go to oh, these, yeah, yeah. these concerts. Okay. So you have the same seat, sure. and you have whatever. Um, so you buy the ticket, and it's like a season ticket for five or six different guys. Sure. Or ladies, whoever comes. So what I like to do with that, and I haven't done this in a while, but you buy the ticket. If you want to go to a couple of concerts, you go. You sell the rest. And the next year, they give you the option to renew your ticket or get a better seat, and you can work like your way down. tickets. Yeah, yeah, but you can get better better areas, better offer. VIPs, and you sell it off. And Better tickets, yeah, yeah. Um, also, what else do I got on here? Oh, I got, I got a lose. A lose. Sometimes you'll buy the tickets, and you have to take the family out on a date because no one bought them, right? So you think you have something which, hot. Which one was that for you? This would be a Tim McGraw. Oh, oh, I'm sure that your life is crushed by that one. So you have a Tim McGraw. Did you ever think maybe your listing just got deleted and that's why they didn't sell? No, no, because, you know, I, I always I always have a little buffer zone so we can go. Well, all right. So, you know, but this time everybody gets to go <laughs> because for whatever reason, we were you have to be either close or cheap. So, or or uh, VIP, or you have to have something you're offering the people, right? So remember when we went to that uh, Brad Paisley concert? Yeah. That was a good one. We probably could have sold those tickets. We probably could have. But but then we never would have had the, uh, there she is, there she is moment. <laughs> and we would have lived on happily without that, right? Brad Paisley, you know, and that was when Carrie Underwood came out, and the friend Pelican about lost it. This is the Pelican episode, man. It is the Pelican. That was a good concert. I think ones like that, like that's what you're getting at, is you find these up-and-coming artists that you know are going places. Well, let me, let me throw something else at you. Have you ever heard of a man named Hank Williams Jr.? Uh, you mean like the Monday Night Football? I mean Bo Cephas. Oh, we're ready to pot, eh? Well, he doesn't tour a whole lot. When he does, he doesn't come out west much, right? Okay. So, uh, a little casino venue, about an hour and a half, what, west of here? Rainbow. Turns out Hank Williams is going to go there. I proves their, uh, you know, updates and see who's coming. Wendover fun. So I see he's going to be out there, and I tell my wife, buy as many tickets to that as you can get. Good idea. So I uh, bought our limit. I'll say our limit. <laughs> How many was your limit that day? I don't remember. Oh. Six, seven, eight, something like that. A piece or total? Oh, tickets total. They were, I don't even know what we paid for them, 40 50 bucks. Okay. So I sold them for several hundred dollars a piece once again. Wow. Someone on eBay, somebody in, uh, I think it was Nebraska or somewhere, bought two tickets That's for insane. Wendover, Nevada, to see Hank Williams Jr. Because that was, I think it's only see what? one or two concerts that year. Oh, we needed, to, you know there's a special, like, plane that comes into there? Yeah. I, I was at a concert there a while ago, Travis Trett. The fun plane. Yeah, the fun plane. Travis Trett, and with other some friends, and we had too many tickets, so we tried to go find, you know, somebody to maybe buy them for face value. So anyways, these two sisters from Minnesota had flown in just to be there for that concert. And if you don't have tickets, what are you going to do? And the, all they were there is gambling. Yeah. That's what they gave in for, right? Man, oh man, there you go. So anyways, Mr. Uh, Hank Williams made me several hundred dollars off of these tickets because he doesn't tour. I can ask whatever I want. 
or he doesn't come out this way. When he does tour, it was a thousand seat. Well, once again, it's a small place, right? So there's a thousand tickets, and it sold out in like five, ten minutes, something like that. So you're saying again, what we're really giving is ideas. We're, we're giving opportunities that people. It doesn't have to be one little thing. Well, that's the thing. Maybe you don't have the room in your house or apartment to store stuff that you're selling on eBay that you want to sit there for for months. You mean your? You mean that your inventory room? Your inventory room. <laughs> Or you don't want to go to the thrift store because that creeps you out or you think it's gross or whatever. Cooties, you mean? Or whatever your excuse is, you got the internet, you can figure out. And this is people, I mean, these are artists and things I know. I mean, this kid here went to, have you ever heard of Greta Van Fleet? Yeah, by this kid, who are you referring to? Well, Aaron right here, you can see who I'm pointing at. Well, our audience can't. It don't matter. We told him it's in the room. Oh, you mean our answer the question. You mean our interview. answer the question. I have no idea who Greta McAdams is. Well, they're the best band ever since. You've heard of Led Zeppelin. Well, I know who Led Zeppelin. Well, this band pretty much just sounds like a new day Led Zeppelin. Like Jamie Johnson. No, well, that's a whole other. So I got the Jamie Johnson tickets for sale. Go well, once again to a smaller, smaller venue. I had my pre-sale credit card, so. I went on and bought six tickets. I've already sold two for a hundred dollars. I bought them for like forty. I mean, the wife are going. He doesn't tour. He doesn't come here a whole lot when he tours. So it sounds like you're again hitting another good niche, and it sounds like you've done a lot of these. I like uh, to scratch my niches. Anyways, when you went to Greta Van Fleet, guest was uh, was it a full house? You can talk. Yes. It was quite packed. Do you think those tickets would have went for more than face value? Uh, you could probably have doubled them. So there you go. So you get with the kids and you hear what the up-and-coming things are, your daughters, your friends. You do a little research, you can find who's playing the smaller rooms that are probably on the cusp of going to the bigger arenas or amphitheaters. You're just, you're, you're just opening a whole brand new window because, uh, it, I mean, ticket sales, it, just like you said, it's it's a supply and demand thing. The scalping the scalping podcast. I got, so when you do that kind of a thing, right, yes. you get on some email lists. I'm sure you do. So I brought an uh, email list today of some events that are coming up in our area Ooh. and some prices, and this might surprise you, it might not. All right. We have a NCAA tournament coming through town. Were you aware of that? Is it coming through this year? It's coming through this year. Oh, I went two years ago. We did, and we tried to buy scalp tickets and have that go for us. <laughs> you know the best part? They were tough tickets to get, but... They were tough. The best part is we doubled up. We got both games. So the remember the uh, St. Mary's and Arizona game, we were like on about the 10th row. Yeah, no, that was the, yeah, it was. No, because it, it was Gonzaga and Northwestern. And, yeah, that was when we were and, up high. And all the Northwestern fans left. So we just worked our way down. Yeah, so I, I'm interested in going. When is that? I'd like to go. Well, I'll sell you some tickets. Well, I'll buy some tickets, and I'll <laughs> sell you some tickets. It's going to be March 21st and 23rd. Now, if you want to buy you a suite, Ooh. 24 tickets, you have to buy all three sessions. How much do you think that would cost a guy? So basically, you're getting a two for one deal, right? Well, you're buying the twenty. You're buying all sessions. So okay. I, a suite. So does that? How many tickets does that mean? You're gonna have twenty four tickets and uh, twelve hundred dollars in food credit ooh. per session. Man, I'm guessing. Ooh, I don't know. Five grand, eight grand. I don't know. You're gonna be at nineteen. Nineteen grand. That's a little steep for me. But say, uh, say you get 24 of your closest friends and you sell your tickets to 22 of them for whatever you break it down to. I don't have that many friends. By friends, I mean internet associates. Oh, I got a lot of those. And then you sit sitting there and say how this guy ripped you off to be here and he took your food credit and you don't get to eat nothing. I don't know. So you're saying it's kind of like you're fluffing your room, like you going into the MacGyver... Oh, fan base thing saying, dude, I found this cool jacket on eBay. It's just kind of interesting because I'm 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 on the list and they're sending me uh arena suite rental things like I've never bought a suite, but now kinda of looking at some of this. Uh let's go with uh Pink. You've heard of her, right? I mean you didn't know Katy Perry, but Pink. I'm sure your wife listens to Pink. Fergie? Pink. I like the color? Uh, 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 yeah, I know what, like Pink Eye? Okay, New Kids on the Block. You've heard uh, of them? Justin Timberlake. You probably just got your new CD. You got the tape from the New Kid NKOYB Block. Sure, 
Sure. Don't don't out my new poster in the closet I got. I'm, okay, Elton John, like Backstreet Boys. Tell me when there's one of these that interests you at all. Carrie Underwood. I told you Carrie Underwood. Okay, Carrie Underwood, September 14th. All right. 24 tickets in the suite again, right? How much do you think that's breaking you down to that's now? some serious investments, and that takes some real uh, cojones to get going on that. Six six grand. Oh, that's not bad. Six grand, you get 24 tickets. That's really And nice. they have a food voucher. I'm guessing with the food voucher, you just say stock the fridge or, right. or whatever. But Load it up. So, I mean, you break that down, that's a couple hundred bucks a ticket out of your pocket. You sell somebody tickets to the suite, 500 bucks. I mean, I'm just saying there's options here that you, you, got you a never lot knew of about. Options. You got a lot of good options. You know what the best thing that we're going to start doing now that we're uh, got this legit up and rolling? What's that? We're going to put these in our podcast notes. Yeah, we need some podcast notes. People need to know what we're talking about so they can fast forward to the good stuff. Yeah, they can go. Here they'd still be fast forwarding. Oh, that's right. They'd, they'd, Episode they'd, five, they're just going to fast forward right through. Well, we, I think we need to change gears here. Well, one last thing. Let's let me, one last thing. If it's free, it's for me. Remember that? I, I, well, I got some feedback on that today. Well, there's uh, lots of places to give out tickets. Radio stations, drawings, yeah. that kind of thing. You can win you some tickets, and then you can go ahead and sell them. Right? You, you're all over this place, man. So what are you out there? You have to go down and pick them up at the Radio Shack? You know, you're out nothing. <laughs> then you go ahead and you sell them. You mean the Radio Shack that's right next to the Toys R Us? Yeah, right down there by the Tandy Computer Store. Oh, right by Shopco. In the mall. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Kmart? Yeah, Kmart. Payless Shoes? Yeah. We're talking about it. There. JC Pennies? They're all going down. Sears? Sears and Robux? That's right. Everywhere you shopped as a kid is no longer there. That's absolutely true, and that's why selling online is the way to go. So we've been he- pretty heavy on the death pile, and let's be honest, tickets are not death pile. That's a pretty quick pile. Yeah, that could be the death of you pile. That's, I mean... And you said it last week you were talking about sporting events and stuff. There's, I mean, we could go off for days on that, and I about did. We totally can, and I think we'll go from uh, ticket talk to tax talk. Oh, that's more exciting anyways. Who wants to go see a concert when they could pay some money to the government? You know, I don't care what your political um, affiliation here is. We're not going to get into that kind of show here. No, we'd be... Throwing punches before the episode was over, I'm sure. Yeah, one of us are uh, interesting, and the other one's just a. Uh, uh, I've yeah, been, we're not getting into it. Uh, you're right, you're right. <laughs> it's tempting, though. Yeah, Anyways, okay. um, the new tax stuff is amazing. People don't understand. You know what I love? When people come in here and say, hey, man, my buddy said that my refund's going to be down. Is your buddy. Uh... If you take tax advice from your buddy at work, you got more problems than uh, your tax, I, I your just, refund being down or, or whatever. I, I, I love that. The key component is to it that everybody who's making more money, which most people are, the economy's better, their refund may be down, but they got more money throughout the year. That's the thing I've always thought when I come here. You, you're usually good about telling me the difference of like last year you made. X amount this year, your this amount, and hopefully it's a it's more than last year. Well, the thing is, is people just don't understand. Because here's the difference: when you and me were kids, and you got a paycheck from Burger King, didn't you work there? Didn't do the Burger King thing. someday I'll have to go down all the paths and places Derek's work. But oh, it was that painter. No, I was Pelican man. This Pelican. is the Pelican show. Yeah, that, that kid. He's all he's all over. So where was the first place you got a real paycheck? A real paycheck. Well, technically, it'd be at the IFA Country Boy Store. I think I got some paychecks from uh, from working there. And they wrote you a check to Derek Everett. I believe so. So on that check, going back to those days and times, because when I started, minimum wage was four dollars and seventy five cents. Yeah. So we'll just keep the math simple. So we, when we do math on the air live. If you were making five dollars an hour, sure, and you worked ten hours, that would be fifty dollars. That'd be fifty dollars. I did it. I got it. Whoa. Okay, but the problem is, is I got that check, and I go to the Bank of America, like the actual bank, to go cash my check, and I look at it saying, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! How come I didn't get fifty dollars?" I, I made I made five dollars an hour, and I worked ten hours, and it should be fifty dollars. And you look, and it's it's it's, it's not. not. It's, it's nowhere not. close. It was like. Forty-six dollars. Well, well, you're doing all right. Where's this money? Who's this FICA guy? I don't know, but if I ever find him, <laughs> he owes me some money. The problem is, is when we were kids, you knew exactly how much you got because the rest was going to taxes. Sure. Now everything is direct deposited. 
Yeah, you don't get that take home uh, check stub and, and you don't go to the bank and see it every yeah. Most people don't even know how many hours they work or what their hourly wage is. They just know last week they got thirteen hundred and seventeen dollars and seventy two cents into their account. Set it and forget it. And here's the difference, okay? A lot of people are on salary. You know what always happens? People will always complain if that check they know is supposed to be thirteen hundred dollars every two weeks. The second that check now becomes twelve hundred dollars, guess what? They got some problems. They are R8 calling everybody at the office. What in the world happened? But you know what nobody does? Um, when it's the uh, 1400 no when one it, makes a phone call, do they? It magically <laughs> goes up and everybody thinks, ooh, the wizard gave me more money. <laughs> and that's what happened throughout this year. Everybody, that magical $100 that came in per paycheck, guess what? That adds up to about 2400 bucks. Okay. So when you, go to, there. when you go to do your tax return and you don't get back as much money as you thought you did, guess what? You probably made more money and you've already gotten $2,400 throughout the year. Well, I guess you'd have to go back and look at your bank statements and then compare it from the year before to figure all that out, right? And nobody does that. Well, that's, I mean, I've had some fun Friday nights, but going over bank statements, I'll tell you what, this, this last probably couple of weeks I've been uh, going through a lot of my stuff and trying to get it ready for you. Well, I don't get it, man. It's it's uh, it's not fun. That's the best part, and that's really what I've come to learn as I service people better. Um, we do a, a lot of people's stuff in different industries, and you know what you don't want to do? What? You don't want to keep track of how much money you're spending. No, because uh, that takes the fun out of it, right? It does take the fun out of it, especially when you're like, oh, man, we spent four grand on Katy Perry tickets, and we sold them for 200 bucks. <laughs> But we sat fourth row. Yeah, great experience. Okay, good times had my most. That's right, but you can do All that. All sales were final, buddy. You can do that. I once. told you that in the parking lot. You can do that once or twice, but when you continually do it, it it's like, oh, man, I ought to change my uh, my opportunities. Well, here. a lot of people, because we grew up, too, we had cash, right? Yes. And you'd have to, you know, use cash, and, and you'd go to the coin star and have to get your money from, from all the coins and stuff. Nowadays, everyone has a magic plastic, and you just swipe it, and uh, it works. So, then, so you never know what you're spending. So that's the hard part, and that's what we really try and do with our clients is help them better understand and give them the reality of this is what you spent and this is what you made. But put it on a piece of paper. Okay. Our, our buddy over there, he just uh, pulled out a great, great uh, thing in college that I learned. What's that? Uh, long ago, and I know this is going to be hard to believe, but if I see or hear something that I don't like, I'm pretty vocal about it. Yeah, I've noticed. Yeah, I'm sure you have. <laughs> Episode 5. <laughs> so I was in an economics class in college. This was back when it wasn't year 13. This is probably about year 7 of college. Okay. My economics teacher was talking about how important, you know, currency and all these kind of things was. Okay? Mm-hmm. And he talked about cash. And then keep in mind, this was about... God, this is almost 10 years ago. And I says, hold on there, Mr. So-and-so. I can't even remember his name. Yeah, it was Mrs. Bishop. Y- yes, Mrs. Bishop. Mrs. Bishop yes. is who it was. I says, she finally got that raise. I, I jumped up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a class of about probably 45 people. And I jumped up, and this is, you know, mid-discussion. I says, hey, Mr. So-and-so, I totally disagree with you. Cash is no longer king. Everything, nobody carries cash. And he says, oh, you're, you're wrong. He says, you want to make a bet? I says, all of the students in the class, and this is just me standing up in the background, any student in here who has cash in their wallet, please stand up. Mm-hmm. Please stand up. How many, what was there, how many in the class to begin with? There was 45 of us in the class. So I'm saying less than 15 stood up. How about four? Four? Were you one of them? Four kids. Yes, I was one of them because I always carry my emergency money. Did the professor count? <clears throat> no. Did he have any well, cash on him? He did have cash on okay. him. Okay. But there was only four students who actually had cash on them. And this was nearly ten years ago. Well, that's, yeah. Like, we've talked about PayPal and Venmo and stuff. This guy, you know, when he gets stuff from the roommates, you used to have to go around, put your little thing on the wall, oh, pay your pay your fair that. share, you'd have checks and stuff. Oh, now they just Venmo each other money, right? Yeah. Or PayPal, whatever, however you work it, it's all electronic. It, it's way better. I mean, I used to have to be the collection guy, put my name on the whiteboard. <laughs> hey, Bass, you owe me $27 for last month, and you still haven't paid for the previous and month. And what, were you going to kick him out? Like, exactly. what did he really have if he said no? 
Not all of us had the the, the cousin the cousin TW money that you know they just paid the magic checks that came from who knows where. Yeah, not all Signed. of us had that opportunity. Just put in there what you think you earned this week. That's right. So going back to that, as we've um, cash is king, so keeping track of this. One of the biggest things that write it down, and we're going to vocalize it today. Okay. Tag mark this this discussion here. Go ahead and make a make a check. Okay. Make, make a check. You got the put the pen out. Within twenty four months, every Venmo transactions that you are doing will be earmarked by the IRS. Well, yeah. I mean, they're gonna for some part you're gonna be ahead of the game, but they're gonna catch up and they're gonna take their fair share, right? Absolutely. Because uh, they want it. So people think that, you know, our performing services, uh, i.e., I don't know, cutting hair, mowing lawns, um, other, you know, doing nails. Paying your bills. Paying your bills. Guess what? At some point, I mean, everybody's keeping track of it anyways. When the IRS comes to realize, like, man, that uh, D. Roy Everett, you know, he cuts hair. He's a fine barber. But he only made $12,000 this year. How is he living? Oh, let me check his Venmo. Oh, well, you just had $45,000 of transactions. So where's the line between uh, people are paying you tips or paying you for a service versus you are just transferring money like a couple, you know, friends or, or I bought you a burger, here's six bucks, that kind of a thing. That's where it's going to get tricky. It's funny, as we were doing this, you know what my computer did over here? I heard it dinging, popping, making all sorts of noise. Yeah. Here I am trying to put out a quality po- podcast for the people, and it's making all sorts of sounds over there. Well, do you know why it did that? You probably owe people money. No, it says, <laughs> Road Pod Mic Review, best podcast mics under $100. Okay. Your computers, everything listens to you. I know. Yeah, we're sitting here. You talk about new equipment. All of a sudden, they're selling you new equipment, right? Exactly. We didn't even bring it up. I didn't get in that game. Well, you are in that game. <laughs> I need it to like ding like, hey, Derek's got some old M&Ms for sale. <laughs> ding, buy them now. Ding, Halloween candy on a discount. Ding, Valentine's candy. Your wife still wants some of them Hershey bars. Ding. Oh, guess what I sold today? What did you sell today? I sold some licorice. Some key lime special limited edition licorice. For you know, I bought it for eighty nine cents a pack on discount at this MPS store, which I was going to get into a whole thing because we had a guy that attended the uh, the grand opening today of the new MPS ooh, location, ooh. which I had to work. Should have took the day off. That's like a national holiday for you. For me, guess how much I sold a bag of licorice for that I bought for eighty nine cents. How much did you sell a bag of licorice for? Eleven dollars a bag. Shut the front door. Eleven dollars, two of them. That's twenty-two dollars. What is wrong with people? It's key lime limited edition. I told you, limited edition. Somebody was munching on that. They'd go down to their grocery store or their convenience store and they'd buy this, and then all of a sudden it's not there anymore. So what are you gonna do? I have a hankering. Wow. Maybe it's a maybe it's a wife expecting a kid. You know how those cravings oh, yeah. happen. Yeah. Maybe it's just a guy like me that likes to look uh, seasonal year round. And he has the hankering for it. You That's go down there. Know. You go down there and you're driving the tri-state area. You're calling all the convenience stores. You're calling up all your buddies at the grocery stores. They don't have them. What are you going to do? Yeah. Ding. Your computer's going to ding. Derek's got licorice for you. Key lime licorice, limited edition. He's got all that you want, but it's going to cost you. I would say that kind of technology, I mean, it's already happening. We're just not high enough on the priority list. But I bet you that's what's going to happen, is you could eventually get your eBay listings. I mean, you could talk into everything. There might be a way to do it now, honestly. I don't know. We have, I mean, Amazon, you could say um, Alexa order and then say whatever. You know what? I've, I've never used Alexa. Well, I'm a Google Home Alexa man. My parents have Google Home. I have an Alexa, but I unplugged her because she started talking just out of the blue. Just like, we're sitting there, not talking. I can't remember if we are Going to bed, something like that, and she just starts talking. And so I thought, that's that's scary. Well, you know, she's always listening. Well, she has to be because she's listening for you to say, Alexa, whatever the command is. So do you, Well, it sure it does. But you know on your phone, you, you know, click Siri, you know, find this or whatever. Do you really think it takes pushing the button to make oh, it Oh, it's terms and conditions. You probably say, you can go to my bank account and send Preppy all my information. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, put, as long put, as it works. Put me on your mailer list. Exactly. So getting back to the taxes. You, oh, you, we're going to go back to, okay, taxes. You threw me for a loop here. Oh, I just remember things. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I Hot was, ticket talk is over. I'm remembering eBay stuff now. You know, well, we like eBay stuff. 
I want to get into the actually me doing stuff because I'd like to make money at this. I'm telling you, you get them kids to work, man. They got those nimble fingers in China. They'd already be like almost ready for retirement age. Sorry if you're listening in China, but you guys work young and you work hard. And our kids need that work ethic. So I'm telling you, put them kids to, to the factory use. So they're not they're not digging coal no more. It's taking pictures on the internet. I need you to help me look on the eBay's, okay? All right. Because I'm looking on the listing side. Sure. Isn't there like a sold side you can go to? Well, you're gonna have to. It's, it's a lot easier on your uh, cell phone. You got the eBay app. I don't I have the we, eBay. You're app. gonna want to download that bad boy. Well, I think we walked through it, but we'll do it again. So well, you're gonna get the eBay app, and what you're gonna do is uh, put whatever you're looking for, right? So. A description of whatever you're selling. Uh, if it's like your board game over there, you can actually scan the uh, UPC code, 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 wow. and it'll bring it up. Uh, there's also an option you can search by taking pictures. So it's, I mean, the technology's just crazy. So you're saying it's getting pretty good. It's getting really good. The excuses are getting. So you might have something to say, I don't know what this is. You're at the thrift store, or you're at the Walmart, or you're wherever you're at. I'm not quite sure what this is. Take a picture. It's going to tell you. Uh, it looks like this. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, you got your image recognition. So I don't know what some fancy name. So now, like, man, every time we talk about this, I, I'm thinking about, you know, I could be doing this full time. You could be. I, it might be a little less stressful than tax season for you. You know, it is really stressful. People don't get that. There's so many changes, and uh, I don't know. Man, we came to do this pod cart, and uh, you are busier than a one-armed paper hanger. There's another one, but it's not airworthy. What? You're busier than a fruit merchant? Yes. Yes, a fruit merchant. A busy man. Okay, I'm on the eBay app. Like, okay, this so... Is, this is live. This, this is, is live. This is what we're going to do. So put in whatever you're trying to sell, right? It, recent or saved? I, don't, I mean, you're just doing a new search, so... Okay. So Let's that really see. doesn't matter, so... Joe Camel <laughs> Vest. Vest. Yeah, I got a good-looking vest. The problem is a lot of these people that were into this about 20 years ago, I guess maybe... They're probably dead or they got, got emphysema. emphysema and stuff. Yeah, so I'm seeing these ones on there, but how do I know which maybe ones? Maybe we're alienating. Maybe we have a high-smoking audience that's all of a sudden offended by this. You know what? If they are, they're probably not our kind of friends anyway. So. I don't know if you like to smoke. That's your personal prerogative, but yeah. save up your points and get this kind of merchandise. Okay, right? so where do I look at it to say... So you're going to want to filter on that. So I filtered, all right. Filtered. You're filtered, and you're going to look at completed and sold listings. Completed and sold. So you should have options down there. Man, you're on the iPhone, right? Yes, sir. Oh, I see it. Okay. I see completed item, completed items, and sold items. And then filter through that. And then done. And then it's going to show you three of them. Three of them, and what are they selling for? Ooh, ooh see, there you go. Joe Campbell. You know the best part is. The vest that I have is nowhere on there. That could be. I mean, there might be somebody that collects them, and that's what they want. Maybe their grandpa wore one and it reminds them of grandpa. Nothing that you I... You never know. That's the best part is what I have is not on here. And, I mean, so you can kind of see the prices and what they're going for, right? So you get an idea of what that might be worth. So what are some of the prices you're seeing? I mean, there's some windbakers and shirts. I mean, they're not going for anything big. But again, the item that I have, like, nothing is on there. And what did you pay for it? $2. So, you can make a profit, right? I mean, I saw a really nice, clean one owner for 150 And that's sold. Well, but it's it's a little different than mine. But what I have is not on here. Well, I'm going to give it a shot. You man. might be that guy. You I'm might gonna, have the piece that... I'm that might be your MacGyver jacket. So, how do I decide what price to put that up? Throw it up for, like, 50 bucks or 100 bucks Or how does that work? Well, you're going to take your pictures. Maybe we'll walk through that at some point. Okay. Uh, you can pick your own. I mean, there's not a set price, right? No. You can ask $10,000 or you can ask $2. That's up to you. And we're going to do that. Gonna... I mean, it might smell like somebody's grandpa. It's It smells good. So they might... I've washed They it. might really be into that. I might remember grandma. So grandma you're spent... that, well, Maybe grandma. <laughs> grandma was a three-pack-a-day girl, but she might not have been. She was more of a lucky strike. So you're saying maybe I should like rub it in an ashtray and it might get value higher on it? I'm just saying memories. People buy memories. Nostalgia is a big thing, right? That's true. So I am going to learn how to list my first item. What else you got here? You know, I, I, I like this because it's accountability. I think you're going to weasel me out. I think you're going to become my competition where I'm going to start seeing you at the thrift store. And you're going to be like, nothing, I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> I just happen to be stopping by. 
Hey, that's my my group of uh, Boy Scout t-shirts there. Uh, yeah. Let's talk Boy Scout teachers t-shirts. Teachers? I'm slurring my words. It's getting light, my I've friend. either had a stroke or this wasn't Mountain Dew that you fed me. I'm not sure which. Was, by fed, I mean drink. It was mellow yellow. This might be some uh, some Sam's Lightning choice in a bottle. That's true. I got that nice cover on it. No, I got those good ties we talked about. Hey, I got, um, well, we got Aaron here. I don't think he's going to be back ever again. He just set us up and, and whatever. We got some sweet equipment in here. You've sold on eBay before, right? Uh, yes, I have. How hard is it? Um, it's pretty easy. Once you kind of get it set up, you got to log in. and. I mean, what did you think it. when you first heard when I told you I'm selling on eBay and uh, stuff and kind of telling you what was going on or what I was making? What were your initial thoughts? I always just think you're crazy, so. I usually am. <laughs> well, cra- crazy like selling concert tickets to some weird event or like going to the front row and yelling at the wrestlers or like crazy like a fox like he's making money more the the latter the <laughs> yeah so there you go i mean he's done it a little bit he's not you know he's a college kid and he's working as the uh the pilot and stuff so he's he's not even got that much free time to do it still manages to he's went to a few auctions the, you've asked me before family members are doing it the That's, crazy you part is, is you know there's still no excuses for us Okay, there really isn't. But I like to put it to people in, in hours. I like to break things down and say, what's your hourly rate that you're actually making? Yeah. And it might not seem like a lot going to a thrift store and, and spending a couple bucks, but if you can turn around and spend some hours making a couple hundred dollars and, and you put it on there and you get better at it, well, you'll the, be making more money doing that than working at any other job. Well, definitely a part-time job. And, I mean, you're a family man. You always want to spend time with wife and kids, right? That's a good hobby. You're out, you're walking around, you're looking at things, you're teaching them value of what might be uh, discarded but have some extra value so they learn brands and stuff and, and can say, hey, Dad, what about this? What about that, right? And the best part is is you can make that money and everything you're doing that you're going to be doing anyways is a tax write-off. And you get, I mean, say you make 500 bucks, whatever, you take the kids to Disneyland, Lagoon, wherever, and they say, hey, this is money we earned. This isn't just dad was, you know, busting it down at the office doing who knows what. Because honestly, did you know what your dad really did growing up? I mean, you had ideas, but like. You're teaching the value of a dollar. You're teaching work ethic. You're making them understand that, hey, that fancy little plastic car that everybody uses, there's something behind it. There's something behind it, and we can go to this store and we can make money. That's right. And we can learn the skill, and that will carry them for the rest of their lives, right? You know, we've been burning through this episode, man. It's been it's been an interesting one. I mean, I, I got lists of things that we didn't even touch. I didn't even get into my, my hot wrestling talk for the week, and I'm not going to now. Well, well it's just because uh, just time flies when you're having fun, my friend. And. You know, you go down to the thrift stores, you get the kids, you list things. Yeah, I mean, that's the fun part. Your wife probably has a better eye for things than you do. I know mine does. So when she says, hey, what about this? And you look it up and it's like, oh, that's worth $50. I got a cart full of $5 items here. Which is more important? The, the key to it is you got to just try. And, and here's the thing is I'm putting my money where my mouth is, literally. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this. Well, let's say, I mean, what's part-time jobs pay? Yeah, really. exactly. Or if it's full time. 15, I mean, 20 bucks an hour if you're lucky. I mean, that's the thing. You want the results, you got to put in the time. So Absolutely. So, 40 hour week, 40 hour pay. 20 my, hour week, 20 hour pay. Something like that, you know? My goal is realistically what I want to do is through this podcast, as I learn how to do this, obviously, right now my time's kind of limited. Which, it's busy season. It's, it's busy season. But I'm hoping very shortly that I, I my goal is I want to make $100 on eBay. I, I want to do that within the next couple weeks. I think you could do it. Learn how to do that. And then I want to up that up to 500 and 1,000. There you go. I think just me kind of learning how to do that this year, my goal is $5,000 in 2019. That's very realistic. That's what I want to do. Well, we'll, uh, we'll follow back up with that. I mean, uh, hopefully people out there are saying, yeah, I'm going to do it too. They're well, listening. And here's the thing. You're never going to know unless you make a goal for yourself. Or you got to try, right? Well, yeah. How much money has that made you since you picked it up in the closet? Nothing. That's been there for, uh, what, 17 years? Wow. But look at how nice that <laughs> Ziploc bag is. That's air, that's air still tight, my friend. You know is that what? a clip-on? That top one there. That is a clip-on. That's got to be up in the value right there alone. I mean, the polyester, the polyester uh, 
I, 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 I don't want to brush these out. You know, they're in clean condition. Yeah, you don't want to smudge those. So I, I got to do that closer to the mic. That's just, I mean, that's. I think we heard it. The air escaped from 17 years of. Oh. 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 I don't know. He's got bagged chips. Don't let him fool you. It's not chips. That's some good looking ties there. Well, see, you got a game plan. Hopefully, the people out there that are listening are saying, okay, I can do this, or I'm doing this. You've given it, me some options. Yeah. They said, you've given me things. We've talked about enough items, and we're going to start putting these in all these footnotes, and as we get better at doing this, um, if you can't find something to sell, like, you're just giving yourself an excuse. I mean, yeah, there's... there's I mean, there's, there's, there's some, millions there's some, and millions and millions of items. There's some guy sitting on a couch in, in Boise, Idaho, just saw Key Lime licorice and paid 11 bones for well, it. Well, here's the funny part. It went to Florida to, like, where Key Lime is a popular item, right? There you go. So you could go get the real thing or you could buy the licorice. <laughs> they bought the licorice from me. I don't know. 22 bucks of licorice. Here's the funny thing, too, is everyone will say, well, so yeah, the first question was, who would do that? Who would buy that? And for a while I thought, yeah, who does do that? Who does buy that? Who cares who does it? Exactly. That's where I got to. I don't know, but they do, right? What's the matter? <laughs> Why do I care if a guy in Florida wants key lime uh, licorice as long as I got it? As long sell? as I can get it for 89 cents and I can sell it for $11, that works for me. Why do you want to sit fifth row at Katy Perry? I don't know, but you do. Here you go. Well, why do you want to buy a, a Brett the Hitman Heart shirt for $400? Oh, I know why. I'm sure you do know why. Best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Whoa. Right there. Man, that, is, that was that was on the cuff, man. Right there. That's why you want it. There's just so many things now that people will buy. I mean, I'd like to see some of these people's houses and stuff so I could rebuy the stuff that I sold them that they want to get rid of and just keep the cycle going. You want to know the cool thing that just happened for me this last week? What's that? On Saturday, I was up at a show and working for my other uh, wheelchair business. Mm-hmm. Guy in Berlin, Germany bought one. Okay. Just walking through and says, I don't care. My wife is having health issues. I don't know how long she's going to be around. Break it apart and send it to me. So how did you get there? We shipped it. And you just figured it out, right? Just figured it out. If it fits, it ships. You got USPS <laughs> right there. If it fit, it ships. <laughs> we'll get to Berlin. You got the money. I got the time. Willie Nelson. All I'm saying. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm off the rails. Still. You are going. I'm... I'm, I'm my, my hot tip on this is it doesn't matter because there's people all over searching for items that you have. Well, okay. Most people at work, what do they do all day? They search on the internet. And they buy stuff. That's right. They're, they're not working. No, they're not. I mean, they might be putting in a 40-hour work week. They're probably doing 17 hours of work at most See, that's, that's the hard jobs. part. Is that's I my guess. I don't get paid unless I do work. So when I surf the internet, I'm not getting paid. But how much stuff do you buy online? You know, I, I buy some. Oh, we're, I know we're almost wrapping up. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there, but I was, this is actually part of my story. I was here last night. It was about this time. I mean, it was about 9.30 at night, still working. Mm-hmm. Get this pound on the door. Guy walks in. He's dropping off the toilet paper I bought on Amazon. What? Wait, what? Now? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. he, he comes here at 9 <laughs> yeah. o'clock at night. 9.30. Was he with, like... A FedEx UPS? It's some guy in a so, truck. Just some guy in a truck. That's probably... <laughs> he's put local pickup. I don't, it's probably my competition. I didn't know there was money in toilet paper tree. <laughs> it was Amazon. I bought it on Amazon. And you know what the best part was? He wiped Yeah, uh, when well, you were done. Yesterday, today... <laughs> I, I would be good. That's got, service with a smile. I got my paper towels, and some guy in a truck dropped them off and bought those from Amazon, too. Same guy? Different guy. So at Amazon's now, like, people just in trucks are dropping yes. things off at all it's, hours of the night? Dude, it was crazy. Okay. So all I'm saying is these uh, Sears and JC Penney's and Kmart's, they're all going out of business because we bought it online. And you know what's never going to change? Those items have to be delivered. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. If you bought it, a truck brought it. I like that. If you bought it, a truck brought it. That was that's for all my long haul guys out there. Well, that just brings us to. Uh, so we can do for the working man. We we love the working man. Well, don't remember to don't remember. I don't know. Uh, it's we're, get, we're getting we're getting. It's getting out in the weeds. Thanks for listening, episode five there. Whoa, well, we're going to throw a plug in for Adam up accounting here, man. Okay, okay. we got to pay the bill somehow. All right. You sure I'm paying him? No. <laughs> I'm going to have to do little heavy checks I, I, to read this for his work he did tonight. 
I'll take you to a real nice concert. I just don't know who it is yet, and there'll be ample seats. If it's a Merle Haggard concert, I'd love to go, but I afraid he's already passed. I say, if you can see a Merle Haggard concert right now, it's not too exciting. <laughs> or it might be if you're seeing it. If you're seeing it, you got bigger problems than taxes. What I'm saying is no matter when you listen to this podcast, if it's tomorrow, if it's next week, if it's next year, you know what you're going to have to do by April 15th? What's that? File your taxes. Oh, another thing, if you want to contact us, too, we haven't even said the Twitter, the... That's right. We're I don't on, know if you got your website up and rolling. We're on Twitter, we're on Podbeam. We're going to be on all the major podcast we'll networks. Be, we'll be on iTunes. Store. Wherever you buy your podcasts at, yes. they'll be still there for freshness, and you can get it. I love it. You can go to adamupaccounting.com. You can hit the D. Roy Everett's double T. That's the way Lord did. Oh, it's, the, it's, it's D, at D. Roy Everett on the Twitter machine. Uh, D. E. And uh, Everett, and I is in Everett as the good Lord intended. I love That's, it. That's, yeah. Mine's pretty easy. Add them up accounting. Go there. We've got a nice little uh, chat with us button now. Okay. We're moving on up in the world. Has anyone used that feature yet? You know, I get pe- I had a guy last night. I called him at 10 o'clock. He's like, wow. And he's like, uh, you get that toilet paper I sent over? <laughs> no, we wanted an appointment for his taxes. Okay. Come on now, man. Don't, don't derail my show. Don't make me wipe it up. Okay, well, you got paper towel, ample supply. I do. You got to get your taxes done. Give us a call. We'd love to take care of you. We do everything online now. I didn't get in the uh, the queue now that I've done crunching all my numbers, adding up. That's the thing. I was, I mean, I do it every year, but how many miles you do? That's why we're, where I'm going. We're going to get you on the old QuickBooks online this year, my friend. Oh, I'm, on, I'm a GoDaddy guy, but you know, we might switch. You, you know the know. best part about what we do, man? Well, that we enjoy it. That you, we love it, and you know there's only two certain two things certain in life. There's only two things in life that are for certain. That would be, what, death piles? And taxes. There you have it. Bingo. Ooh. I was good.